A CME would never harm plants or animals. But, buddy, it is. It's the devil on electronic. Everything electronic. Goes. Anything electronic, this thing is going to eat. And why is that? It's because of the charge of the particles will come in. And the first thing he likes to do is to find some way to, like electricity does, it's looking for the leaf paths of resistance. In this case, you've done a good job. You put your entire power grid 40 feet in the air up on top of telephone poles. Just going, here I am. And down through the atmosphere comes the charged plasma particles. They'll hit the lines and power lines. Um, first of all, not insulated. So all them lines you see out there. Energy wasted. It, that's one thing, but if you touch one, oh man, you will light up like a Christmas tree right before you explode. So um, the other reason they're not insulated too much weight. They'd pull them down onto the ground. So you got all these naked wires up there. Here comes the plasma. It settles down like rain onto the lines. And those power lines are designed to carry about 5,500 volts. Well, a CME will drop about 3 million volts onto these lines. They'll go cascading down the lines. Those lines will, in just seconds, will turn from a line to it's red hot, it's white hot, and it's poof, it's gone. Right before it poofs, it's going to give a spike like you're not going to believe. Uh, if we were in this room and a CME hit, um, all the lights in here would flash like flash bulbs. All the in your lamps, in your house, your office, lights, everything, they all get really, really bright, and that's it, and they're out. And, buddy, they are out for good. They're not going to come back on. You're not going to have a line crew. Oh, we'll go out and string up more wires. We'll be done. Mm -hmm. You're looking at least two to five years where you can get your power back on. But that's not the worst part. That's just... The beginning. That's the hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> Wait till you see the rest of the course. Right before those lines go poof, all the big gray cans that you see hanging on telephone poles, they're called transformers. And inside those transformers, they're filled with oil. Because the electricity goes into the transformer, goes through the oil, helps cool it down, comes back up, and helps keep things maintained. If they didn't do that, you melt the lines down. But that big surge, that spike that's going through there, it will detonate every one of those transformers. Now, every transformer you see is a napalm bomb. I've been through a few hurricanes in southern Florida, and in my backyard, of course, in the two corners of my backyard, there are two transformers on each pole. Ooh. And every time we have this hurricane, these things explode. Oh, and I'm Lord. so impressed because the only thing it reminds me of is a combustible bomb. Yeah. You know, in the field. And of don't that you love that wave. sound and, and the that, purple light? And the light and the, ugh. That purple light is the atmosphere being ionized by all the charged particles going on. It's just bad news. But so imagine you're walking down the street, the lights flash, then all the transformers explode, oil comes flying out that's on fire, you got napalm all over the streets, everyone that you're looking at is on fire. And you think, well, it can't get no worse. <laughs> oh, yeah? That's just the first minute. <laughs> it's going to get a whole lot worse. About 20 seconds after all that, here they come. What? Aircraft. All the aircraft. It's over half a million people in the sky at any one moment. Right. So down they come. Engines shut off. Can't restart. These are missiles full of fuel. Yeah. Right into the ground, full of fuel, that's a good point. And this is more... A lot of them could be full of fuel. And they'll crash into the streets, hospitals, libraries, schools, homes. You know, they're just coming down. they got no control. And that, you think, God help. You know what? Everything's burning from coast to coast. Not just a fire. You know, when we have a forest fire... 
like California, it's isolated, isolated to a part areas. of the state. Any other 48 states can help. But in this situation, all 48 states are on fire. From coast to coast, everything's on fire. Well, call for help. Call the fire department. You can't. What do you mean can't? Cell phones are out. Relay tires, transmission towers, all dead. Even your satellite phones won't work. Because you have to transmit to a, a dish, the up signal, that thing ain't there no more. Ham it's radios. Dead. It's dead. Call the, well, call the police. You can't call the police. And we're not making this up, y'all. It's not just me sitting here telling you this. There were 26 agencies. And I mean, it was everybody. It's the CIA, the FBI, the NOAA, uh, all these national organizations were asked to do a study on this. And some of these agencies don't even like each other. No. But all agencies came back with the same numbers. Yet you better stop what you're doing and pay attention because that means whatever these numbers are are real. And they were horrifying numbers. You can count on probably at least 75 to 85 percent of the population would die in the first week. First week. Hmm. Because they go, well, why is it? Catastrophic event. Yeah, they said, well, everything's on fire. You're going to die in fires. Smoke inhalation. Um, All smoke in the atmosphere, too, probably, right? Crashing aircraft, explosions. Uh, oh, that's not bad enough for you? Okay. Cars don't run. They've been knocked out. Their computers have been knocked out. No transportation. You're on foot with everything. Bicycles or horses. That's it. And then here comes the second wave of horror. You go, well, what would that be? There's no food. There's no water. And something that will really grab the millennials, no cell phones, no pages, no notebooks, no laptops, nothing. All that is just doorstops. Useless. It's worse than Mad Max. Yeah. Because it'll turn into that. It will. It will quickly. Second wave of horror. Man on man violence. And that's where it really cranks up the numbers. Uh, people have no food, no water, no medications. What about all the people in the hospitals? They're dead. Well, they got backup generators. Oh, really? About 90% of them don't work because they never turn them on or test them. What about medication that people need to survive that they get at the local pharmacies? Those are all... You're Cut dead. Off. Diabetic, you're done. <laughs> it's it's just, a lot of, that's, a, that's a lot of numbers alone. That, it won't take long to get up to 85, 90%. Oh, and now you got 60 nuclear reactors that's on scram, and they're losing their water because they can't pump. There's no power to pump them. They got back generators. They only last for three days. They're going to overheat. They're going to overheat in three days. Meltdown. So now you got nuclear reactors that melt down and could blow out, and you got... 60 Chernobyls within continental United States. So that would end civilization. You're smoke. You're done. You, I can't paint a bad enough picture. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad I paint it, in reality, when it happens, it's going to be far worse. And people are saying, oh, you're an alarmist. You know, you're running no, chicken right. little. The sky is falling. Dude, wake up. Do you remember the blackout of New York? That was caused by one fuse the size of my forearm. And when that thing went out, it shut down, you know, the entire northeast of America mm -hmm. and part of Canada. And the only good thing that came out of that was the air quality improved over 24 hours because there was no There was no, nobody moving around. <laughs> right. right. And an awful lot of babies were born nine months later. That's right. <laughs> but other than that, there wasn't too much good out of it. That's how vulnerable it was. One part the size of my forearm. Tuck all that out. We can't prevent this from happening. It's going to happen. Yes. Just a ma matter of time. Yes, a matter what of time. What can we do, though, to protect ourselves or what's the preventative measures? There's a lot of things that you we can, can do. do, especially starting with the grid. Well, you don't have to go through this. And you don't have to pay a trillion dollars. For $10 billion, we can fix the grid where you won't have to go through this. What you do, you use... 50s technology, old, tried and true. We know they work because the military has been using them since the 1950s. Surge protectors, uh, diverters, switches, 
Faraday cages, which is like a net you throw over the device, keeps the CMP off of it, and just capacitors. Put, capacitors. Put all this stuff in the grid, and then when the charge comes in, it handles it or saves it. Yeah, it actually saves it. You can save it. Well, it di yeah, because if you do it right and get some really big capacitors, man, them things are going to light up like Christmas trees. And you could pull off for months of power off that thing. Um, it, do it doesn't have to, you don't have to die this horrible death. Just do a little prevention. But then you thought, well, how hard is that to get done? Man, I can go to the moon far easier than I can trying to get the grid hardened. Well, you just said you're using 50 technology. What's the problem? Politics. <laughs> I mean, you've brought this up and have written many briefings on this. And sad to say, you did not get really good responses from the United States with For it. God's sake, we were trade by our own people within our own rank and file. Senator Lisa Mikowski, the chairwoman of the Senate subcommittee on hardening the grid. Well, you think she'd be all for it. She killed the bill three times. These people are playing politics with your lives, your kids' lives, and your grandkids' lives. They don't care. Do your damn job and protect the citizens of the United States who has paid you to do this. Mm. But you're all sitting there and you think you're safe and you are not. So, Dave, we talked about, you know, how this is so political and you've been yeah. having, you know, a big wall put in front of you Absolutely. in the United States. but. Where else could you maybe demonstrate this? You did tell me you oh, had yeah. another couple uh, space agencies, yeah. new space agencies that came right. out um, that wanted you to come over and maybe demonstrate this. Yeah, because obviously America's not going to do it, mm -hmm. and and it's not the American people. God, no. God bless them. It's, um, it's the idiots in Washington that won't do it. And so I've tried and tried and tried for years to get things to change here to get your grid hardened. Well... The Middle East approached me to talk to them about running a space program. So we said, you know, we're going to go sit down in a couple of weeks here, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about. But that's just not all that's on the list. <laughs> they got a laundry list, you know, this long of things they want me to do. And if they throw out the bucks, I can do them all. But why that affects you uh, is that one of the items is they want me to harden their grid. They want me to do it. They're asking me. Here in America, I'm trying to pound down the doors and get a, get a people moving. They won't do anything. So I'll go over to the Mideast. I'm going to harden not just Egypt or Syria, um, the entire Middle East. Yeah, and that includes Iran. Oh, he's a traitor. No, I'm not. I'm trying to save your butt because I can't have any continent on fire from a CME. Or an EMP attack. Why? Cause the smoke will go up in the air. It'll be so thick of an entire continent. It'll blot out the sun for two years. Every expert on the planet agrees. And first thing, all plant life dies. No sun. Second thing, all animal life. That's all you guys will die. So I'm not going to, if I can prevent that. Yeah. If that means I have to harden the grid over Iran. Fine. Yeah, they don't like us. Maybe they will when I get done. But it's defensive. They can't attack you with a hardened grid. Well, they'll say, well, you could fire an EMP weapon. It wouldn't bother them. It doesn't matter at this point. It's not about different countries, even politics. Man, this problem is species. Survival of the species. Humankind worldwide. If you don't approach this thing and tackle it head on, it's going to come and get you all.